Hey, how are you doing? MGC is here. My name is Alexei and it is MGC News. Right now we will share with you the most interesting news from the Java world and beyond. Make yourself comfortable, cause we are starting. Let's start from the awesome news about very soon event. Java on Conference 2022 will be held between 7th and 8th December and it will be online and completely free. You can expect two days, 10 talks and more than 3,000 participants. You will be able to listen to the speakers from 10 countries in topics about Scala, serverless, functional programming, big data and many more. In the description you will find a link to this registration. It is super easy, so do not waste your time and register right now. I've already done. Java Development Kit 19, a non-LTS long-time support release of a standard Java, arrived September 12. The JDK 19 features include structured concurrency in an incubator phase is intended to simplify multi-threaded programming through a structured concurrency API. This concurrency threads multiple tasks running in different threads as a single unit of work to streamline error handling and cancellation. This feature is from Project Loom. A preview of record patterns to deconstruct record values. Record patterns and type patterns can be nested to enable a declarative, powerful and composable form of data navigation and processing. Record patterns is part of Project Ember, an effort to explore and incubate smaller, productivity-oriented Java features. A preview of a foreign function and memory API, which will introduce an API by which Java programs can interoperate with code and data outside of Java runtime. A preview of virtual threads, which are lightweight threads that dramatically reduce the effort of writing, maintaining, and absorbing high throughput concurrent applications. Goals include enabling server applications written in a simple thread per request style to scale with near optimal hardware utilization, enabling existing code that uses a Java Lang thread API to adapt virtual threads with minimal change, and enable troubleshooting, debugging, and profiling of virtual threads with existing JDK tools. This feature is also part of Project Loom. A third preview of pattern matching for switch expressions and statements, extending pattern matching to switch to allow an expression to be tested against a number of patterns, each with a specific action, so complex data-oriented queries can be expressed concisely and safely. This feature also is part of Project Ember. A fourth incubation of a vector API that would express vector computations that reliably compile at runtime to optimal vector instructions on supported CPU architectures. The vector API is from Project Panama, which aims to enable simpler communications between native and JVM code. Make sure you check the description for the link to the JDK 19 to check out it more precisely. By the way, IntelliJ IDEA already added support for Java 19 features so that you can easily discover them. In the description, we will also drop the link to IntelliJ IDEA blog post about supported features of GDK 19. The report is based on data culled from HackerRank's own platform, rather than relying on survey responses. The report ranks the most in-demand software engineering skills and programming languages among employers and developers, based on the number of language-specific skills assessment that the company conducted in the past year. The top five languages by volume were Java, Python, SQL, C++, and JavaScript. Trailing far behind these languages, but ranked 6 to 10 respectively, were Bash, C Sharp, Go, TypeScript, and R. Among the leaders, demand for TypeScript and Go grew fastest in 2022, as did demand for PHP. In other findings in HackerRank's report, R and Scala experienced a loss of developers in 2022. Languages that grow in 2021 and 2022 are expected to continue to grow in 2023, including Java, Python, and SQL. The demand for REST API skills grew by 179%. Demand for Docker skills has been eclipsed by that for Kubernetes container orchestration skills. Employer and developer demand for data science and machine learning skills is growing. Overall, the tech industry continues to grow although growth in 2022 slowed compared to 2021. We will drop the link in the description to this report. Make sure you check it if you're interested. 
If you already used AWS Lambda, you most likely love it due to simple programming model and easy operations. Your functions are run inside of a secure and isolated execution environment. The lifecycle of each environment consists of three main phases – init, invoke, and shutdown. Among other things, the init phase bootstraps the runtime for the function and runs the function's static code. In some cases, initializing the runtime for some languages can be expensive. For example, the init phase for a Lambda function that uses one of the Java runtimes in conjunction with a framework such as Spring Boot, Quarkus, or Micronaut can sometimes take as long as 10 seconds. Second, the static code might download some machine learning models, pre-compute some reference data, or establish network connection to other AWS services. In order to allow you to put Lambda to use in even more ways, AWS introduced Lambda Snapstart. After you enable Lambda Snapstart for a particular Lambda function, publishing a new version of the function will trigger an optimized process. The process launches your function and runs it through the entire init phase. Then it makes an immutable encrypted snapshot of memory and disk state and caches it for reuse. When the function is subsequently invoked, the state is retrieved from the cache in chunks on an as-needed basis and used to populate the execution environment. This optimization makes invocation time faster and more predictable, since creating a fresh execution environment no longer requires a dedicated init phase. If you would like to use Snapstart, you should be aware of some aspects to be snaps resilient – uniqueness, network connections, ephemeral data, and so on. If you are looking forward to try this feature, the good start will be original announcement, which you will find in the description. Spring Framework 6 is generally available from Maven Central. This is the start of new framework generation for 2023 and beyond, embracing current and upcoming innovations in OpenGDK and the Java ecosystem. As a major revision of the core framework, Spring Framework 6 comes with the Java 17 Plus baseline and a move to Jakarta EE 9 Plus in Jakarta namespace. This provides access to the latest web containers such as Tomcat 10.1 and the latest persistence providers such as Hibernate ORM 6.1. Infrastructure-wise, 6 release introduced the foundation for ahead-of-time transformations and the corresponding AOT processing support for Spring application contexts. This enables first-class support for GraalVM native images with Spring Boot 3. Josh Long have already prepared a video with tips and explanation of ahead-of-time compilation engine and GraalVM. We will drop the link in the description. We also include a link to the full list of changes and features in Spring Framework. But Spring Framework 6 is not the only great news. Spring Boot 3 is now generally available too. It is the first GA version of Spring Boot that provides support for Spring Framework 6 and GraalVM. Highlights of the new release include a Java 17 baseline, support for generating native images with GraalVM, improved observability with micrometer and micrometer tracing, support for Jakarta EE10 with an EE9 baseline. Again, we will drop the link in the description with the release notes of Spring Boot 3. Please let us know in comments when you are going to update your Spring dependencies to the latest versions. Kotlin 1.8.0 beta has just been released. Along with that news, Kotlin team also shared the result of first Kotlin developer survey. Survey has been designed to help identify and prioritize the pain points that most significantly affects Kotlin user satisfaction. The collected data will be used to refine and prioritize the Kotlin team's plans. According to the first survey, the current Kotlin customer satisfaction score is 86%. The first round of research confirmed that the main pain points for Kotlin users are currently idea and build performance. The build setup was also among the top problems. The Kotlin team has already started improving build performance, with further steps planned. In general, Kotlin users are very satisfied with the completeness, quality, and usability of the language support in the IDEs. However, the IDE performance clearly doesn't provide the best experience while using Kotlin. The customer satisfaction score is just 56%. Kotlin team has already taken many steps to fix IDEA issues, and more are planned. Make sure you are using the latest version of your IDE. 
Kotlinx coroutines and Kotlinx serialization are satisfying the needs of more than 80% of users. And Kotlin standard library is an ultimate winner with the 90% customer satisfaction rate. By the way, you can check out the Kotlin Library Safari YouTube series and see if you are using the full power of Kotlin gives you right out of the box. Kotlin team is going to gradually improve Kotlin developer survey and conduct it in a regular basis. So you have a real opportunity to influence the language and tools you are using. Lambda expressions were introduced almost 10 years ago in Java 8. It is a cool feature but it is at odds with checked exceptions. The signature of Java's built-in functional interfaces doesn't use exceptions. It leads to cumbersome code when one integrates legacy code in lambdas. It is evident in streams. Nicholas Frankel shared a post where he explains how we can manage such problem. Here is an example. Processing stream items, we would like to load a class by its name in map function. Since class for name declares check it exceptions, we need to handle it in map function. Since class for name declares check it exception, we need to handle it in map function, making code less readable. One of possible options is to encapsulate try catch block into a class. A good try can be a sneaky throw annotation from Lombok, but it doesn't work for an existing KPI at the moment. Next option is to use Apache Commons Slang utilities and failable API in particular. It makes your code short and concise, but brings you runtime error instead of compile time. For more fine-grained cartel, you can use Vavr. Vavr is a library that brings the power of functional programming to the Java language. The first example fully relies on Java Stream API and Vavr's try and either monads. By the way, we've already shown you an example of either usage in our previous video. And here an example of our stream API, which mimics to the Java streams, but has additional features. For the detailed information about possible options and after's conclusion, check out, check out the link in the description. The Box Belgium is the largest Java conference in Europe. This year, it was already the ninth edition. The past two editions were canceled due to COVID. It was extremely hard to be fast enough to buy a ticket. DevOx Belgium 2022 is five days which include deep dive days, where you can enjoy more in-depth talks about two, three hours, including hands-on workshops, and conference days, where talks are being held in a time frame of maximum 50 minutes. The coolest thing is that all talks were recorded and available on YouTube channel. Günther Rothstart attended all five days and shared his takeaways in the blog post. Here are the topics which were covered. Project Loom, virtual threads, GraalVM, what's next after Git, JetBrains fleet, future of front-end development, Maven, testing, security, artificial intelligence, and many more. If you heard something that grabbed your attention, you would check the link in the description to the blog post and the Vox YouTube channel. That was last news for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to get more interesting content from MGC.